Welcome to Unit 12. This unit is about having a vision for your ideal life and making it happen. I'm pretty happy with my life, but my ultimate dream is to buy an old house in the south of France. What about you? Are you happy with your life at the moment? What would your dream lifestyle be like? I would like to travel around the world, have a big mansion near the sea, and have two dogs. In this unit, we'll look at reported speech and learn ways to rephrase what somebody else has said without using their exact words. Marco said he hadn't seen Julia that day. Petra invited me to her birthday party. We'll also focus on indirect questions. These are useful in more formal situations and when you want to sound more polite. Do you know how to make these questions sound more formal or polite? In listening and speaking, you'll listen to an interview with a Venetian gondolier who's having the time of his life. Why do you think he likes his job? Reading and speaking looks at two very different people who did something amazing, something that made a difference to their lives and the lives of other people. Do you know anybody who has achieved something amazing? What did they do? Everyday English will give you lots of commonly used clichés. By learning and using these expressions in conversation, you can sound more like a native speaker. You can go online to review material or to consolidate the language and skills from the unit. Are you ready? Let's get started. We all like to think that we have a social conscience. We want to do the right thing, and we believe that if we could, we would try to help people who are less fortunate than ourselves. But it's still inspiring to see other people putting these thoughts into action. When Bill Gates started his computer company, Microsoft, in 1975, he couldn't have guessed that fewer than 25 years later he would have become the richest man in the world. Gates made billions of dollars at Microsoft and in 1994 he and his wife, Melinda, started using their wealth to help others. In 1999 they started the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, with the help of other rich individuals like Warren Buffett, they began making a real difference to the lives of people around the world. In 2008, Bill Gates started working full-time at the foundation. By 2010, the foundation had given over $24 billion to programs around the world, with work focusing on global development and health care. Much of this work focused on preventable diseases that affect the developing world. Two-thirds of deaths in children under five in developing countries are due to diseases that can be prevented, such as malaria. Malaria is spread by the bite of a mosquito and it causes nearly one million deaths every year. 95% of these deaths are in Africa, and 85% of those who die are under five years of age. But you don't need to be wealthy to make a difference to people's lives. The day-to-day -day work of an individual 
can be just as important as the huge resources of a billionaire's foundation. Sometimes you just need to have the time and the desire to help make a real difference. This is Pam Llewellyn, a nurse from a small town called Upton in England. When Pam retired at the age of 59, she knew that she wasn't ready to simply stop helping people. And just a year later, she was living in a remote rural town in Uganda in East Africa. Using her experience as a nurse and working as a member of an organization called Voluntary Service Overseas, or VSO. So, were her family surprised at her decision to give up her comfortable life in England to go and work in Africa? I don't think they were surprised, really. They know that during my life I've done slightly different things. I retired at 59 knowing that I wanted to do something different and exciting, and that was the beginning of my VSO journey and the beginning of my first ever visit to Africa and my beginning of understanding diseases like malaria. VSO is an international organization that works through volunteers to fight poverty and disease around the world. Over a period of years, I'd heard a couple of interviews about people that had gone to Russia, Southeast Asia, Africa, and I always thought, mm, I'd like to do that one day. And coming up to retirement, I thought, I'm going to fill in the form and see what happens. VSO sent Pam to the district of Miria in the northwest of Uganda. In this remote rural area, many people live in poverty. A lot of villages haven't got running water, and people have to get their water from a pump. Life expectancy in Uganda is only 45. <laughs> Pam worked with a team of local community volunteers who travelled around the district giving families mosquito nets and talking to them about malaria prevention as well as other health issues. I was lucky because when I arrived in Uganda, VSO gave me medication and that was a tablet every day of my stay during my two years. So I took the tablet, I never forgot and I never got malaria. They also gave me a treated mosquito net, which I used every night of my stay there. If Pam hadn't taken malaria tablets or had forgotten to use her mosquito net, she might have caught malaria living in Miria. And unfortunately, this is the reality for many of the people she worked with who couldn't afford tablets or mosquito nets. You have to use the only way to prevent getting malaria is to sleep under a treated mosquito net. And of course, local people can't afford to buy them. They're not provided free by the government. They are given out by some charities some of the time. The volunteers all knew that if the nets weren't used properly, they wouldn't protect anyone from malaria. So education was an essential part of their work. You need to understand why you need the net, what you're preventing, and how it is best to use the net. So the project that I was working on really believed that giving a net alone isn't enough. You need to have an education package with it. It was quite a change from Pam's life in England. Pam lived in the community and had to adapt to a very different standard of living. Although there were also many similarities. Well, surprisingly, you can go to a cash point, you can go to a hole in the wall, you can get some money out of your UK 
bank account if you need it. Having said you can go to the hole in the wall, some days it doesn't work. Some days there's no electricity. It's very much the same. Um, there are shops of a sort, um, Lucky Seven Supermarket, which we used to joke that if there were seven things you wanted, you were lucky. Um, but you just adjust your life. Okay. Pam spent two years in Uganda and became part of the community in Miria. Through her work, she didn't just help to change the lives of many people she cared for, she changed her own life too. I don't think I will ever be the same again. I feel differently about how I live here. I feel differently about how my family live. And I've now been back over a year and I still haven't been into a big supermarket. If Pam hadn't gone to Uganda, she would have missed out on a life-changing experience. But is there anything that she would do differently if she could do it all again? If I were to have the experience again, I probably would have done more homework before I left. I bought the guide to Uganda and I bought a map. And I thought that was probably enough preparation. If I could do it again, I probably would make more effort to contact more people who had actually been in Uganda for as a volunteer or working short term, so that I could have been better prepared for what to expect professionally and culturally, from first hand rather than from a book. Many people are surprised at Pam's decision to start work for VSO at the age of 60. But she believes that waiting until she retired was a good thing. I don't think I could have done this when I was younger. Um, I wouldn't have had the confidence to do it. I wouldn't have had the skills to have done what I actually did in Miria as a nurse. And I don't think I would have survived very well. I don't know, but personally, for me, I think it was the right time. And it would not have worked so well had I gone when I was younger. And what was the most rewarding part of her two years in Uganda? People ask this question quite a lot, and... Um, it would be quite easy to say that during the time that I was there that we distributed over 6,000 mosquito nets so that I know that 6,000 families were benefiting. But it was the friendships and the people that I met and that contact with ordinary people in Africa and visiting their homes, sitting on the floor in their mud hut, laughing over something is a joy and an experience that I don't think you can buy. And I felt very, very privileged to, to be able to do that.